This week we continue our reflection series of Living My Dream Tokyo 2020 as the Olympic and Paralympic athletes share their personal experiences, challenges and what it meant for them to participate at the Tokyo 2020 Games which was made possible by funding from the National Lotteries Commission. So Tokyo was my eighth Paralympics. So it was, it was totally different to any games we had been before. Um, for, for the cycling, we, we didn't even stay in the village. We didn't even see or experience the village. We were in a hotel close to the Mount Fuji, where our event was. And basically we moved from our bedrooms or our hotel rooms to the dining hall, to the bus, to the competition venue and back. That was the full spectrum of, of where we moved. So it was almost like being in hotel quarantine and getting out once a day to go train or compete. It was slightly depressing. We, you know, we didn't get into the hype that you would get into when you're in the village. The African team was a very small team. And it was almost, you know, as if other nations are still a little bit afraid of us. You know, what strain of COVID are we carrying? How infectious are we? And so forth. So it, it was a little bit isolated. It was a bit, it was a bit mental. But I think the, the biggest challenge for us was the weather. Obviously, you know, when, when, you, when you look at a result and it's, it's, it's not as what you were expecting to deliver, where you believed in yourself and you believed you had done the work, there is, there is disappointment and there is reflection. And I think I questioned a few things, you know, in did I make the right choices, you know, in my training? Did we do enough of specific stuff? Um, and in the end, I had to make peace and be content with that this was not a normal build-up. You know, to, 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 make, to make sense of, of disappointment, it, it takes years of experience. I've been doing this for, for 30 years now, and I can, you know, I can remember scenarios where I was gutted. I've dealt with disappointment where you're coming in as the world number one and you don't even make finals. I've dealt with that. I've dealt with where you're coming in as the world record holder and you don't even make finals. And that is experience. And I think what, what, what makes the difference between those of us who persevere and those of us who go on is how do you turn that adversity around? Uh, my first Olympics was in Rio 2016. That was my first time and I also went to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and it's been five years that I've been an Olympian. I think my most memorable experience at the Games was just the size of the food, food court. So I'm used to seeing the, the food court, especially at the Rio Olympics, it was massive. But then you get this food court, it's probably bigger, but there's two levels to it. So <laughs> that, was a, that, that was quite special. You know, when I, when I reflect back at the Olympics, it's, it's hard to, to think of it because it was such an emotional roller coaster <clears throat> uh, with the injury that I had and, um, you know, the possibility of me not even racing because it was so bad. But you know, what I remember the night before was just going in and giving it all that I had. That was a message me and my wife were talking about, even with my team, is you go there with no regrets. And for me, that's what I did. For me, the result of the race wasn't what happened on the day. It was just a purely of pushing too hard in the final weeks before, before the Olympics. Um, a slight oversight of a compensation from a previous injury. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's devastating because I did not finish the race. I think every athlete wants to complete a race, especially at the Olympics. And for me, it was devastating not being able to. Um, looking at you know the x-rays and things that happened during the race, I probably would have no ankle and maybe no career. So I think it was a good thing that I stopped and the pain was unbearable. And that's a, a massive learning curve for me. It, a result doesn't define us as an athlete. I've had many other great achievements. I've had many other great days in my life. And I think that's the important thing as well as at the Olympics, it's not only just about the race or the result, it's also about the experience. Without the support of the NLC, it's, it's been a, ma a massive appreciation from my side. And I can't thank them, thank them enough because 
without racing, like there's less income. And you know, for me, I just want to carry on and do what I do and do what I love doing. And that's you know, doing sport and training and racing and, and going to races to compete. Toen ze eerst uitgefigureerd dat ik ga, ik was raar opgewonden. En dat was, ik denk dat jij was een van mijn grootste dromen nog van dat ik bijklein was. Want ik heb, ik heb de eerste keer Paralympics gekeken. Toen dat Londen toen nog 12 was. En ik denk dat ik dat altijd verstaan is. Hoe komt dat gebeurt niet? Wat gaan aan niet? Al wat ik niet gezien heb, was dat was mensen zoals wat ik is, wat Biggy anders is en die andere mensen. En ik denk toen ik kies was, dit was net zoals een van die grootste ervarings nog. En dit was een groot eer om net te zoals de wereld die in de span gaan wees en voor Zuid-Afrika gaan tegenwoordig op zo'n groot oppervlak. Eerste ding, ons het, ons het, la, ons het in Taikia het ons laar die avond aangekom. So, wat gebeur het, ons was, ek denk ons het 12 uur geland, 1 uur geland en ons het eerst 4 uur by die village aangekom. So, die eerste ding wat ek gaan doen, het is stort. Eerstens, want ek het nie waar ek een gevoel na dit nie. En ek het ik besluit dat ik niet gaan slapen, nie, want anders de moers je slaaproutine op van de dus 7 uur verschil in de tijdzone. Dus so ik besluit dat ik eerst je volgende avond gaan slapen, die gewone tijd dat je begin draag maakt voor het. Maar ik denk, ik denk onze dag ook in dat ons eerst een beetje gaan rondlopen en kijken hoe het lijkt in de Willy. En ik denk, ze is net om die Willy's eigenlijk te zien, was een van de grootste ervarings nog, want ze is wat hulle sê, nou verstaan ik eigenlijk hoe hulle, hulle dit sê. Als je niet in die village was, nie, verstaan je niet dat gevoel. Als je niet bij die games eindelijk was, deelgenomen daar niet, je kan het nooit eindelijk verduidelijken, dus wat je het ervaren hebt niet. Ik denk dat die dag was eindelijk een van die dagen wat ik nog die, die meeste alleen gevoel heb, omdat de meeste van die mensen, dus ons, ons appartement, het al die leer geworden. Ik denk dat die dag, net voordat ik kan deelnemen, het, was er het leegste, want die zit net ek in Luzon in ons kamer. Ik denk niet dat dit een invloed op mij deelnemen gaat, nie, want voor mij het ek gesê, wat, wanneer ik kan deelnemen, dit gaan tussen mijn eer wees. Niks anders nie. Ek het foute gemaakt, wat nie eindelijk so vuist om, om te geweer nie. Ek het my eerste twee gooi, het ek heel my uit die lijn uit gegooi. En dit was, dit was twee gooi wat my silver medaille so kry. En toe die laatste gooi, het, het ons heel my techniek verander. Wel, dus die selfde techniek is net soos een korter beweging om net een gooi te kry, want ons is bang, ek sy nie, is nie op acht beland het nie, want ek, ek het twee gooie en gooie gehad. Ek was achtste plek in die, in die top, in die top acht in. So dit beteken, ek was net net in. En ek denk nie, soos ook geëindig het om die experience, soos, as dit nie gebeur het nie, sal ek nie geleer het uit dit het nie. National Lottery Commission en die um, sportstraat sy baie dankie vir al die financiële support en dankie dat hulle alles gehelp het, terwijl die tijd wat allemaal so gesikkel het. Dit was baie speciaal vir ons, dat hulle net die moeite gedoen het om ons te help, te kyk waar hulle ons kan help met al die soos, soos implemente vir ons en nieuwe diskuskine, waar ons geld kon kry wat ons dag nie kon nie, gewoon echt nie. So baie dankie vir alles. I was outside of the country for just over two months for the preparations for Tokyo 2020. Before the finals, it was simple. Get as much sleep as possible. Most people don't sleep. I sleep very well, 13 hours. Um, and then, uh, you know, run the race in your head a couple of times. See what you need to execute. Uh, really work at keeping calm and knowing when you want to attack. I think those were the biggest parts of the preparation. And then for the long jump, it was just about enjoying. I mean, you have six jumps you can correct on the day and there's no need to really do anything beforehand rather than or, or more so you just want to rest and recover. I think I really enjoyed the 200 meters, weirdly enough, which is actually my worst event. So the big highlight was that 200 meter final, just really coming around the bend. It was the last event for myself for the games. 
and uh, having that opportunity to be with the competitors that went through the 100 meters which was a very close race and it was also very exciting exhilarating um, but the essence of what happened in the 200 meters was run your own race uh, they will go out ahead can you actually catch can you do the impossible can you push yourself to the next barrier uh, the long jump was cold. It was <laughs> cold and frustrating. I couldn't get to the board. Uh, we did a lot of preparation for it. It wasn't the performance we expected, uh, but looking back, uh, we did everything we could on the night. I have the privilege of being a Pumalele Mplongo's coach. We've been together now for five, going on six years. I'm extremely proud of his yeah. achievements in terms of, you know, what he came out of Tokyo with. Obviously, <clears throat> you know, you, you come back and you look objectively as someone who wants to improve um, going going forward and you think, okay, what could have what could we have done better? But um, certainly, um, you know, as a team unit, we always looking to learn, looking to grow, looking to improve. Um, so, you know, going forward, we'll certainly take the learnings from, from this season and improve on the positives that we've had um, from the previous season, uh, you know, the build-up to Tokyo. I think uh, National Lotteries Commission really empowered us as a team to put in the groundwork that was necessary to get things like two Paralympic records and a world record. Uh, no hardware, but we got as close as one can and how it allowed us to live our dreams is to, to focus you know if you are going to achieve anything you need to invest you need to invest time money emotions and what lottery did is they opened up that space to say here's a platform you go about how you need to uh, as long as it fulfills what you want to see for yourself and the contribution you need to give to the country and you wear the green and gold of pride and we behind you 100 percent Sports Trust acts as an implementation partner to their trustees, partners and corporate donors. We wish to thank the National Lotteries Commission for their support so that these athletes could pursue their dreams.